Item number, SCP-135. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-135 is to be contained in a partitioned plexiglass chamber, at least seven meters to a side. All sections are to be completely sealed off from one another to avoid cross-contamination. SCP-135 itself is to be in a central section, with 1.0 to 1.5 square meters of floor space, with a 5 centimeter wide runoff trench around the perimeter that drains into a tank, the contents of which are to be piped into an incinerator at the end of every week. The remaining space in the containment chamber is to be used to house five chemical harvesting vats, one vat per partition section. A single access corridor is to lead from SCP-135 section to outside the chamber. No personnel are permitted within SCP-135's effect radius. All maintenance, taking of samples, etc. are to be carried out by remote control robots. Disciplinary measures need not be taken against personnel that violate this rule because the direct consequences of SCP-135's effects have been deemed consequence enough. Robots are to be maintained and cleaned by Level 1 personnel. Once a week, SCP-135 section is to be hosed down with solution U-82B until only its outer coating is visible. In emergencies, flamethrowers may be employed to reduce mass quickly. Due to the potential catastrophic effects in the event of cross-contamination, at no point are SCP-329 or SCP-427 to be contained within the same facility as SCP-135. Description: SCP-135 is a human female, age undisclosed, that promotes rapid, uncontrolled cell growth within a radius of 2.25 meters from itself. It remains rigidly in the fetal position and has never been observed to move. SCP-135's effect is carcinogenic to animal tissue and induces malignant neoplasia in plant and fungal tissues in 100% of recorded exposure cases, with severity and disorganization increasing exponentially with closer proximity to SCP-135. Within 0.1 meters, cells will not die, even under conditions where they would normally, causing SCP-135 to be steadily buried under a continually growing mass of plant matter, fungal matter, and microorganisms. This undying state extends to SCP-135 cells as well. SCP-135 has been shown to lack an epidermis, instead having a crust of mixed plant and fungal matter that has incorporated itself onto SCP-135's skin, interspersed with tumors and patches of raw dermis. SCP-135's lungs, diaphragm, and intestines are ruptured, and growth extends into the chest and abdominal cavities. It has been fitted with wide diameter plastic tubes for use in draining excess biomatter. The Foundation came into possession of SCP-135 after it and a surrounding ball of growth rolled off a cliff in the mountains, crushing a hiker on the trail below. Class B amnestics were administered to the civilians and law enforcement personnel involved, and the incident was covered up as having been caused by a pair of male goats that slipped and fell off the cliff edge during a dominance battle. Later examination of the growth revealed the partial skeleton of an adult human female, with osteosarcomata covering 1% of it. SCP-135 was found in the space between the skeleton's ribcage and pelvis. A viable DNA sample was recovered from the bone marrow of the pelvis, and testing confirmed that the skeleton belonged to SCP-135's biological mother. All personnel involved with SCP-135's retrieval and initial testing were later diagnosed with various forms of cancer. Out of the affected, only are still alive at the time of this writing. Attempts to terminate SCP-135 with sustained gunfire, flamethrowers, caustic materials, vacuum, and extreme pressure have all failed. Further termination attempts are forbidden by Order of O5 due to SCP-135's potential uses in cultivating useful bacteria. EEGs confirm full brain activity. No attempts to communicate with SCP-135 are to be made at this time. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-134, Star-Eyed Child, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.